Right, it's a name I know, you know, very well. It is Chris Jericho, world-famous wrestling star, and also a dear friend of Benoit. Mr. Jericho, thank you for being with us. Thank you. I, I knew the whole time we were talking and discussing the crime scene and the possible use of steroids and the death of the little boy, that you, as a friend of Benoit, is hearing all this. How has all this hit you? It's almost the tale of two cities, the tale of two people. There is the Chris Benoit that had these horrendous acts of extreme psychopathic lunacy in the last couple of days of his life. And then there's the Benoit that I myself traveled with, lived with, but said I love you to on many occasions. He was my mentor, he was one of my best friends, and he was, he was a brother to me in so many ways. And the 15 years I knew him, and the two days that he decided to do these horrible, horrible acts, it, it's hard to kind of discern the two, and that's why we have to figure out what would cause such a mild-mannered, polite, influential, uh, tremendous person and performer to do such things. Is steroids a reason? I think it goes a lot deeper than that. I think you're seeing a man with some severe psychological trouble issues that held held them in for far too long until everything combined has caused them to snap in such a horrible way. Mr. Jericho, you spent so much time with the over many years. Did he ever tell you about his son handicap? No. And see, this is the thing. That's, that's why I really wanted to come talk to you, Nancy, and, and, and try to explain a little bit of Chris Benoit, the man, to some of the people that have never heard anything about wrestling, don't know anything about him or, or you know, the millions of fans and, and, and hundreds of co-workers that he influenced in such a positive way and entertained. Chris was a very quiet man, but not a recluse and not a uh, hermit. Just quiet. He minded his own business, but he was always around. He, he, there was a joke. He would laugh. And of all the years I was with him, I never once saw anything. If there was a fight, if I went nuts and wanted to beat somebody up, he was the guy that would contain me. And a lot of people can tell you that. And as far as knowing about Daniel's uh, condition, it wouldn't surprise me, and I'm saying this seriously, if even his own parents didn't know. Because if Chris had decided that he wanted to keep it to himself, he wouldn't have been able to pry that out of him with anything. I don't know anybody myself or any of his close friends, his co-workers, his boss that knew or even suspected anything about, about him having the Fragile X. As soon as I read the symptoms of Fragile X, it fit Daniel to a T. In what All way? In what way, Mr. Jericho? The, uh, the, the uh, lack of, of social skills, the never uh, hard to make eye contact, intense shyness, uh, flapping of the hands was one thing I read. I remember being a little bit very hyper, ADHD, a uh, very kind of a hyper little guy. Even to the, to, the, to the point of uh, his ears were kind of a little bit bigger, his head was a little bit larger, and you just don't think about those things. Some kids grow into themselves over the years, but what, now that you read it, you can kind of really see where all this ties in. I remember at a WrestleMania party two years ago, my son, who was a year and a half at the time, spoke more and better <coughs> than Daniel did, who was about four and a half at the time, and they were playing, and I just thought Daniel was like his father, just quiet and naturally withdrawn. Now you can see some of these indications that maybe it was more than that. What about the former WWE wrestler and superstar Chris Jericho? So Dr. Marty, back to WWE, former WWE wrestler Chris Jericho, also a really dear friend of the Wad. Um, a lot of people have perceived him moving down to the ECW as a demotion. You say that's not a demotion. Why do you say that and why the perception? No, I'm glad that once again, I'm glad I got to come talk because that's, that's, that's just such a fabrication and, and totally wrong. The WWE operates with three separate TV shows, Raw, SmackDown, and ECW, with three separate brands. The champion of each brand. Chris was the WWE champion on the Raw brand. That's what you're seeing where he's hugging his family and all the confetti's coming down. Then he moved to SmackDown, which they moved the wrestlers around to freshen things up. And on SmackDown, he was kind of in the middle, middle level. So to better utilize his talents because he was across the board probably the best wrestler in the WWE and anyone will probably tell you that. So the move into ECW was twofold. One, he was, he's about to become the ECW champion. And two, ECW is more with some younger guys that are just learning. And Chris was a great trainer and so well respected. They wanted him to be kind of more of a trainer to some of these younger guys to help them with their future endeavors. So to move Chris to ECW, Chris would not see that as a demotion. He would see it as doing his job, which is to help the business and to continue the business going, the business that he loved. Chris never had a job, ever, except for wrestling. He never delivered papers. He never worked at a convenience store. He wrestled. So for him to go help some of the younger guys, he would take that as an honor. Well, it sounds to me like he was turning into more of a trainer. 
Well, no, because he was supposed to be turned into the champion. Okay, okay. Right? I'm glad you filled that up because I didn't understand it. As you want, Beth, it must have been my best. Rumors are flying, theories are flying that his death, Ben Wah's death, was actually a murder. To Luis Fernando Yoso, report illustrated. What do we know? Is there anything to support a theory that Ben Wah was actually murdered? Well, I talked to the investigators, Nancy, and I talked to the uh, district attorney, and so far nothing that they have seen conveyed to me would lead us to believe that this is a possibility. What we most, most likely have is somebody who was deeply depressed and, uh, you know, possibly on anabolic steroids and, and may have, uh, may have uh, suffered a side effect. We just don't know. I mean, what